Hi and welcome to another AutoCAD tutorial video. In this video we are going to draw a section for a house. If you don't have a section line drawn on your plans yet you need to look at the previous video just before you start this one. Picking up from the previous video then we have a ground floor plan showing the, the downstairs arrangement. We also have the section line AA on the plan and the direction of view is to the right. We also have the first floor plan up here and this will allow us to draw the section properly. So first things to do when uh, drawing a section is just to take a copy of the plan over. Although I suppose if you've watched the, the elevation videos that I've done, there there is an alternative by using the UCS, but there is always more than one way to do things in AutoCAD. So this time I'm going to rotate this copied plan. I've rotated it the wrong way. Um, so let's rotate it again. 180. Okay, so basically then we can use this for the, the cross section lines. Now, I'm just going to stay on this section line layer that I used in the previous video, and I'm going to pick up where the, uh, the walls are. So that first line is a good long line, and what that allows me to do then is just copy that across to various parts of the plan. We've got some interim walls in various places. So let's just start off by drawing the walls. Did that pick up those last two lines? Doesn't seem to. Okay, that looks a bit better. And then we can switch over now to the walls layer and we'll draw a line just for the, the ground level. And the next thing we can do then is uh, think about the foundations. So we didn't pick up those interim walls either, somehow. So let's just pick up the magenta line again and take another copy or two of that. I'll just pick up endpoints to make sure we get something properly. Um, so these thicker lines are the outside walls. We need to have a foundation at the bottom of those because they are external walls. Uh, we can draw, so that's 350. Um, if we draw a rectangle, say 750 by 350, what's that look like? Move that from the midpoint there to a mid between two points, if this works. Mm, here and here, okay. Yeah, arguably it should be a little bit bigger than that, maybe. Um, I'll just offset by 50. At this point, it is a, a planning drawing, so it is indicative. Uh, our new foundation size, what's that going to be? 850 by 450. Yeah, that looks a wee bit more substantial, probably a better job. So we can trim off those lines there. And again, trim off those lines. And we can copy that line over to the bottom here. Again, just trimming off the lines as necessary. Um, so for the foundations for the other walls, they may not need to be quite so big. Uh, I'll just revert to 650 by 350 again for those ones. Uh, let's put a horizontal line in just to, to match up the top of those. And we can move that from the midpoint there to mid between two points. And then we can copy that over from that point to mid between two points again. Okay, so now we've got the, the foundations in. And then we need to think about the structure. Where is the structure going to be? So I'm going to change those lines now over to the walls there, just so we can see what's happening a bit more clearly. And within the wall itself, we can take out the, the ground floor level. 
again, really, you should do that for the internal walls. And floor thickness, so let's go for a ground floor thickness of 350, just as a, a general idea at this point in time. We can refine that at a later point if doing more detailed drawings. Uh, so the floor to floor height, we're going to use a floor to floor height of 2800 millimeters. And then we'll use a, an interim floor thickness of 300, so offset by 300. Of course, um, it may not be the same on the, the ground floor. Or, uh, the first floor and the ground floor will be different. So let's take a copy of that now and place it down here. We do need to line this up properly, so let's take a wall down, or a line down from that wall, and line the plans up. Okay. And we can move that line then. Oh, of course, that section line is not the right way. Plants not the right way around. Okay, so let's line it up now. That'll look a bit better. Yep, looks much better. Okay. Uh, maybe just make that line purple again to help us pick up what we're doing at first floor level. So the outside wall will still be in the same position, but we need the internal walls. Let's just check whether they're in the same position or not. We also have the stairs there. Um, we can worry about those a little bit later. So on the first floor, yeah, the in my case anyway, the first floor wall does carry on up. So that is good. That's the way it should be from a structural point of view. Uh, when you've got walls, solid walls, certainly on the first floor, you want to try and make those load bearing. Um, however, they are only 100 thick at this level. So we can delete that other line and uh, we'll just use the fillet tool here, making sure that the radius is zero. Okay, use the fillet tool again. And then we can use another line just to, to draw that wall in as such. Okay, and then a floor to ceiling height for the first floor of 2400. Just for now, we'll draw that line the whole way over. Uh, is that line? Yeah, we'll put that line on the, the walls layer again. Another thing that we need to think about then is the position of the roof. So we'll line up the uh, well, we're going to have probably a window head height of 2100 and the head height for doors on the, on the ground floor are the same height, but that's from the, the ground floor. So if we if we offset that 2100, just as an example, is the six line on the first floor cutting through a window? It is, so yeah, we do have a, a window in there and it is a bathroom, so we don't want the window height to be too low. Um, so we can have a head height there of 2,100. And with the bath in there, I suppose we probably want to make the Cell height maybe 1,200, something like that for the bathroom. Can always change that if necessary. But what we now, then need to think about is where the fascia and soffit comes in. So because that's 2,400, I know that height already. We'll match up with that and we'll draw the fascia in at 200. Sorry, the soffit is 200 out from the wall. 
and then we can have the, the depth of the, the fascia 200. And then we can take a line here. I'm going to make, yeah, let's make the roof pitch 35 degrees. So we can change over from dictating the length of a line here by pressing tab and we can make the, the pitch a 35 degree pitch there. Um, and if we know, well, if we mirror that just randomly at this point, that didn't work, hold on again. So yeah, let's mirror all three lines. If we had the center point, that would maybe help a little bit. Uh, but we can just move that in here. And then we can trim the lines at the top of the roof. Uh, we can trim these other lines. So in terms of the, the thickness of the, the roof, um, it really depends on the, the structure of your roof. At this point, you may or may not know whether it will be a truss roof or a cut roof, but just as an indicative size at this stage, we can use 250 for all three elements. And then if you get to the point of developing it further, you can, uh, you can change the, the thicknesses accordingly for your, your section. Um, so basically, I've just tidied up those lines there. We can also trim out anywhere where there's a junction in the walls and the floors, like so. Uh, there was also a window on the, the ground floor. So that's a kitchen. Um, the sill height there needs to be higher than the worktop. The worktop is probably about 900, so we could we could make the the window sill height there 1050. And then again, we want uh, the head height to be 2100. And in this case, actually, the the door is on the front part of the building. So let's just carry those lines over. Um, and move that. And then trim. And down here then, I guess we need to trim also. So what you should do is put in a door. Uh, you still need the outside line there just to show the the reveal of the door opening in the background. We can offset by 100 to where the door frame itself would be then. Uh, and we make the door 100 thick. And then we'll just copy that line. What is that? Probably 150 that distance. And we need a door frame at the top, certainly. At the bottom, it would be a little bit different. You would expect that the frame, well, it depends on the type of the door. Um, for easy access, for accessibility, we probably would want to consider uh, making it flush. So I'm just going to leave the, the frame missing at the bottom. You could have a low profile frame, something with a magnet in there and a seal just to, to make that work properly. But so far as a door goes, that's probably enough now at this stage. Um, if you've got a window or anything like that, you may want to show a little bit more detail on the window. Yeah, okay, so that's maybe, um, let's add a little bit of a window on there, 800. Maybe that's not quite enough, is it? Move it down by another 150. We could add a window in. Just show them where the, the pane of glass is, like so. We'll flip over to the window layer. Now, technically, yeah, there is a window sill and things like that there. Um, certainly, when you're doing more detailed drawings, you would want to show that. 
I think just for outline planning, it's probably sufficient not to worry about that just at the moment. So let's offset the window by 100 a couple of times and then 150 again, I think. Okay, and just taking a, a similar principle then adding in a window frame. We can make the properties match. Trimming out the parts and then just adding in where the glass needs to go. And we can then copy that up to the other window. Let's just delete one of those lines so we don't have duplicates. And let's extend that line. We can use the stretch tool just to move that up to a slightly different height. And there we go. Now you do need to add room names. You do need to add internal elevations. I'm not going to do that just in, in detail now as part of the video, but in the next segment of the video, I will show a couple of examples of what has been done in the past. So here we have the first example, a pretty good effort here with drawing a section. The foundation size is a little bit small and debatably there may be foundations required for these two walls here. It looks like these walls don't have foundations, although if they are stud wall um, then you, you don't need to have such a, a foundation in, in that sense. Uh, the floor thickness could be a wee bit bigger here. It just looks a bit thin and then around the junctions these should be opened up just to indicate the, the overall outline. There is a truss roof arrangement shown here. It's good that the student has thought about that, but this is not necessarily the focus with an outline section for planning. It's good that they have some elevational information inside, like doors and, and the toilet here, and another toilet upstairs for the ensuite. Uh, it might be good to see some furniture in the bedroom and the office. Just on the room labels, it is a good idea to use capital letters with those and put them slightly higher, maybe, almost, almost eye level. Uh, but definitely cap, capital letters would be good. The stairs, that's a pretty good effort with the stairs. It looks like there's a, a, a quarter landing and a change in the, the way the stairs go there. Um, it would be good maybe to show balustrades as well if that is shown on the elevation. Although debatably, just depending where your section line is, it might be that you're cutting through the stairs and you don't see the, the handrail or the balustrades. With the windows, yeah, the, the reveal in the background needs to be shown there, just the continuous line where the wall is in the background and definitely open up the the, the construction around the, um, the fascia and soffit there. Um, it's not an elevation of the, the barge board that you're showing here, you just open that out. Uh, let's pick up some more things. So this one has a title, which is good. Section AA scale one to 50, great to see that information. The first and ground floor levels are also shown quite clearly. This student has shown hatching on the foundations. That's not required with uh, a planning application. It is required for building control. And again, some of the, the details here just with the wall elements um, and some of the roof elements have been shown in detail. They're not required at this stage. This is nice because the student does have a, a roof light bringing light down into, I don't know if it's a bathroom or an ensuite here. There are no room labels, which doesn't help. But another good feature with this one is that there are a couple of elements in the background that have been shown. So depending where you show your section line, if you have a sunroom in the background or you have an L shape to your building and there's another part of, of the building or a wing of the building in the background, you do need to show that. Uh, the doors are shown quite clearly. The the hinges of the doors here are indicated, or the, those lines should be dashed. And a reasonable effort with the stairs there, but I'm a bit worried that those stairs won't work just because it looks like uh, there's two, two changes in direction, which is not ideal. I think we've got that student to, to change that at a later development stage, but some good things there to pick up on also. 
the next one then, so this is very different. This is a flat roof example with a bit of a parapet shown around the wall. Quite different, quite experimental. It's nice to be different. Uh, good aspect here is that the walls are clearly hatched with grey fill. I do recommend that. Um, and the floors are a little bit, well, the first floor certainly a bit thin. It's nice to see so much effort with the, the elevations. I'm not 100% sure whether everything's quite to scale here. Um, the the work tops and that seem a little bit squat, a little bit too short. Um, it's good they've got room labels, but all the room labels are a little bit too close to the ceiling. I'd drop those all just down to something closer to eye level. Um, and it is good, yeah, to show a break in the foundation lines as such, because we don't always know how far down you need to dig until you get ground that's suitable for building on. Uh, the bathroom in this one, yeah, so bedroom, kitchen. It's good to see where the different rooms are. A little bit ornate, maybe with the balustrades here. There's too many lines there that kind of stands out a little bit too much. But one other thing, actually, with this student, the, the drawing was a bit too close to the title block. So I have left that in there on purpose. Uh, give your drawings a little bit of space. Um, it's good to show some elevational heights or some dimensions, really, on the section there. Um, a floor to floor height and a floor to ceiling height are usually the two principal ones that you'd be thinking of, as well as the ridge height. Uh, and it's good that they also have an elevation in the background. However, there's a foundation shown for that wall, which you wouldn't really want to see just at this point. Um, so again, some nice elevational information in there. The stairs, the pitch of the stairs and the pitch of the handrail maybe don't quite match up there. So just check that that does work and check that, that meets building control regulations. And the final example, so it's good to add in title for the drawing, section view. I would call it section AA, as we've outlined in the, the earlier part of the video. And I would tend to line that up maybe with the left hand side of the, the wall here, as opposed to the, the ground lines and show the scale as one of the earlier examples also did. Nice roof light here and the stairs are drawn fairly nicely, but too much information in terms of the internal wall construction and roof construction. This is a nice featured roof in that um, the, the roof space area or the, the first floor area is a bit more like a roof space in that the, the roof uh, is sloped, um, so that's interesting in terms of how that all works. Head height, whether that worked or not at a later development stage, I'm not sure, but there's a little bit of something going on here. It's just not entirely clear what is happening with the the junction between the, the wall on the, the internal part of the house, and maybe a foyer area, which could have a little bit of a gable end here. So thinking in three dimensions can be a little bit tricky. I do acknowledge that. Um, but at this stage, it's possible. Um, it's possible that this line should really come down and just meet with the ceiling level here and have a small bit of roof structure in that area. Thanks for watching the video right to the end. I hope it was useful. Um, please feel free to like, share or comment.